Hey, somebody ought to be screaming, though, really, about this thing that happened in city council. Uh, I mean, this, this well, at is... At least we know where the mayor stands now. That's good. You know, it, it, we know where he stands. He's, you know, there's... Everybody's a... writing their record, as we say, yeah. all the politicians. You know, and he's a man pleaser. He thinks he's doing right. But, you know, God's the one we have to please. And we go to call, killing the unborn oh, and thinking it's all okay. Hey... There's a big there's a big day coming when you're going to realize it wasn't okay. I just got I just got a little thing. I just got a little thing uh, from uh, Chuck Colson. You, you remember Chuck Colson? Chuck right, Colson, one of President Nixon's men that spent some time in jail, in jail. and became a born again Christian. Yeah. Call it Billy. Well, he he uh, refers to uh, a book written by C.S. Lewis, and in this uh, and in this uh, book by C.S. Lewis. Uh, Lewis has, did an essay entitled um, Men Without Chest, and he drew an analogy between the spiritual life and the body that sums up his objections to the supreme rationalism of the Enlightenment. The head, Lewis said, is reason, the stomach, the stomach is passion or appetite. The head alone cannot control the stomach. It needs the chest, which is spirit, to restrain, to restrain our baser passions and appetites. Baser passions and appetites. I lost 18 pounds, Bill. Yes. You're starting to talk about me. Okay, he says, but yet after World War II, schools begin to teach ethics based on subjective standards without transcendent uh, moral truths. Lewis challenged this, writing, quote, We make men without chests, and we expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at we laugh at honor, and we are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and bid the guiltings to be fruitful. That is what we're doing in America today. We are taking away the spiritual element and abandoning morality based on religious truth, counting instead on our heads and our subjective feelings to make us d to do what is right. And, uh, I mean, he says, uh, and I agree with him, today he says, uh, look at the Washington Wall Street, academia, sports, the ministry, and he said, all the spoons are gone of morality. In our zeal to accommodate our so-called enlightenment and tolerant age, we have lost the ideal of public virtue. I'm reminded of Samuel Johnson, who upon learning that one of his dinner guests believed morality was merely a sham. Okay, now get this. We got a lot of young people here. He said, morality's a sham. So this guy had a dinner guest, and the dinner guest said, I believe morality's a sham. And so Johnson said to the butler, said, well, if, if he really believes that there is no distinction between virtue and vice, let us count the spoons before he leaves. Ooh, Billy, Billy. <laughs> yes. I would have counted the knives and forks, too. <laughs> yeah. Today there aren't any spoons left to count. Look at Washington, Wall Street, academia, sports, the ministry, all the spoons are gone because we can no longer distinguish between virtue and vice. Virtue and vice, and uh, we got a lot of young people here tonight. I'd like to get some of their opinions. Maybe we'll take a we'll take a uh, poll here pretty soon. Yes, the uh, poll. Let it go. I mean, there. Whatever happened? Whatever happened to to honor and integrity and virtue? I mean, these were some things that America was built on and were counted precious and something to be defended. That's why a lot of our guys have gone and died on the battlefield. That's right, Billy. This is a shocking statistic. I think maybe he brings it out in this article. 44, listen to this, 44% of the baby boomers here in America say that there is no cause that would lead them to fight and to die for their country. There's nothing. 44% of the baby boomers, that's... What if their soccer team won? Well, I don't care. They, they say nothing. They wouldn't fight for nothing. Hey, somebody wants America, let them have it. Uh, you know, there used to be a slogan there when the communist threat was on, I'd rather be red than dead. So, yeah. you know, let's just capitulate. Yeah. Come on, get real over there. Don't be clapping for that. <laughs> we, if, we don't, if we don't have an awakening, if we don't have awakening, and really it's young people that need to wake up and see they've been sold a real bill of uh, untruths, a bill of goods, uh, there's not going to be much to, uh, you know, everybody wants to go out and uh, if it feels good, do it. There's not going to be anything left to, to be doing because uh, everything's going to be down, down the tube. We have told people there are no absolutes and that they are not responsible for their own behavior. They are simply victims of a system that isn't working anymore, and they don't have to worry about it because the government is going to fix it for them. I, look, and that's pretty well you, you the know, philosophy. But look, it's just like O.J. Simpson. I mean, right now they're building a jury that can never convict this guy. 
He'll never be convicted. Oh, well, he's, he's proclaiming his innocent and offered a $500,000 reward today. Fact is, you know what I told my brother what we ought to do? I want to turn my brother in for the reward. He's thinking about it now. That's a good idea, yeah. yeah well, the co right in, in fact, they interviewed the Los Angeles police and said that's what's going to happen now. They're going to start getting all kind of uh, crazy people saying, yeah, well, I did it so that they can pick up the 500000 You know how they said, though, that they know now that it was not O.J. for sure? How's that, Bob? They found a Super Bowl ring at the site. <laughs> yes. I I don't think he has. I don't think he has one of those, does he? That's right. Okay, let's take some phone calls. Uh, we're going to line two. All right. Line two. And we're talking a little bit about uh, the Planned Parenthood thing and the fiasco, the moral fiasco of the nation. We're in the pits of depravity. Duncan, you're on the line. Who are we talking to? Duncan. Duncan. Oh, yeah, Duncan. We're talking to you, boy. Oh, yes, Bill. Yeah. Are you, like, totally against women? Am I totally against women? No, I'm married to one. Yes, because last night at the beginning of your show, you were making jokes about heavy set women, and now you're like. Hold it! Who is making jokes about? I never made any joke about heavy set women today. You did not make oh, a single joke about his wife. That, hey, that was. Oh. 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 What did you say, Bob? I said, you're talking about Sarah being 90 years old when she had a kid? Yeah. I said, your wife's half that age. That's right. My wife's half. No, I, we, the, we were talking about uh, the newspaper article that came out there, the uh, research that was done that Mexican food is very bad for you. It's filled with, hat, with uh, a lot of fat and <laughs> a lot of hat and fat. And that uh, one out of three Americans is overweight. Have you been down to the mall lately? Yeah, I have. I mean, there's women down there waddling around in pedal pushers. Uh, what do they call them now? Hey, but the looks like two looks, looks like two pigs fighting in a gunny sack. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame. And others are out there wearing tents. I mean, come on. And not only that, it's bad for their health. It's not only uh, uh, an attack upon uh, the eyesight of a... Uh, of the public, but it's also uh, very, very bad for their health. A lot of people are dying prematurely. Hello, Duncan, are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. So, I mean, I'm against fat. I'm not against women. There's as many fat men as there are fat women. Yeah, but I'm still saying the more women, the better. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> The, the bigger the women, the better. The bigger the women, the better. Okay, well, you got a lot to choose from there, Duncan. Okay. The bigger the women, the better. Hey, really? Some yes. people, people, I'm telling you what, skinny cowboys like those large gals. But it doesn't matter. They there do. is a certain, there's a certain weight that you get over, and uh, not that I'm looking at anything here, Bob. Hey, I've lost 18 pounds, Billy. There's a certain weight you get over, and it's not healthy, and it's a... Uh, you know, just like cigarettes and all that, it's uh, adding to the health burden, uh, health cost burden of America. Hello, caller. Hey, what's up, Bill? This is Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you tonight? Fine. I just wanted to see that, um, I just wanted to see what's up to your crowd again. Hey, Mike! Mike! Don't, don't, Mike. don't get him started, okay? Hey, I think it's awesome when they yell. What? I think it's awesome when they yell. And also, I wanted to say, like, Jay Leno and all that stuff. Yeah. Suck. None of them are compared to your show. Okay, give him a big hand clap. Yeah. Hey, Bill. We like Mike. Hey, Bill. They're not live, and you can't call them, I'll tell you that. Hey, Bill. Yeah. I also wanted to say hi to my friend Adrian and also my friend Amber. Okay, Adrian and Amber. You got two Double friends A's. there, Mike. Double Keep A's. working. You'll get some more. Thanks a lot, Mike, for your call. Okay, we're, make sure your mic's on there. Bobby, are, are you? See, I've told you how many times I've told you to be on. Okay, we're going to line three. Line three. Hello, come in, Earth to Moon. This is Brother Adam. Hello, Adam. Hey, what's up? Um, Jupiter. Jupiter. <laughs> Jupiter is getting bombarded. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, nothing. Okay, thanks for the call. Okay. When you call back, when you get something on your mind, they got to be quick. We're going to line four. We get a lot of calls in this way. I get, get a lot of calls when they call in. There's nothing on their mind. Hello, caller. This is uh, Mark. What's on your mind? What's up, Bill? This is Mark. Doing the you got a nice show, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice show. Come on, come on down and be in the audience tonight. So we got a nice live crowd down here. I was wondering if I could be in your show, man, because I'm an impressionist. You're an impressionist. Yes, we need someone hey. to make good impressions. What kind of, okay, what kind of impressions do you do? Some like Wayne's World. Like Wayne's World. I could do Garth. Can you do Garth? Let me hear a little bit of Garth. It's like people in the things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. <laughs> I'm sure you're better in person. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Wayne's World, Wayne's World. What? Thank you. 
Okay, well, give me a call at my office. I will see about getting you on. We haven't had an hey, We haven't wait, had a local wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's don't get rid of him yet. I want to hear you. Can you do George Bush, somebody that, you know, we all know who it is? <laughs> who else do you do? Dude. 